Hi, this is Charlie Mato Tuyello with Blue Bear Flutes, our website bluebearflutes.com where you'll find some of the most amazing and affordable Native American flutes. They're both handmade and Native American made out there on the web. Uh, today is uh, something I wanted to share with you for some time. It's something I've done on so many other videos, but I thought I would kind of sum it up as best I can on this one to help out. Um, I have thought about offering a troubleshooting video to kind of help beginners especially because usually people have been playing for a while know what to look for, but uh, in this particular case, this is actually a flute that a very kind flute player, beginner, uh, sent back to me and asked me to check it out. And before I show you exactly what happened with it for him, I want to let you know that the flute was made excellent, beautiful, played incredibly. We wouldn't send out a flute that wasn't in those, at least in those criteria, if not better. So that having been said, um, I have purposely uh, placed a little piece of packing paper below the primary part of this. I can't think of what a flute would start with a P, but anyway, pan flute, no, it's not pan flute. Anyway, so just I wanted to give you an opportunity to hear what it sounds like when it's got a piece of packing paper lodged underneath the, the block. So it sounds kind of awful. It's got an airy sound. There is uh, some tonal issues. But if I slide this back, you can see my little piece of packing paper that I put right there. It's just a little square of paper. That's not an uncommon thing to happen. And unlike a silver transverse flute that you might buy uh, from another retailer, the, uh, this particular type of instrument has a very important area there. That little track area is so critical to making it play properly. Simply enough, that's something that can cause the restriction of the airflow right here enough that the flute is going to play improperly. So uh, with that in mind, there's another possibility that something could have happened, and this is not too uncommon either. This is what it sounds like when a packing peanut that I just shoved in there while you weren't looking uh, got stuck up inside of it. Packing peanuts are a part of life. We don't use bubble wrap for a reason. Bubble wrap is not this all magical protective layer that's gonna stop your flute from doing anything. It's what helps it keep from getting beat and banged up. And we actually have a very natural option that I wish a lot of other retailers out there would consider, but we use biodegradable and compostable packing peanuts. And then we also wrap it in a corrugated paper, which is very soft and actually has an inner lining. And it's just, you know, we put a lot of thought on this kind of stuff to send you a beautiful flute, not one that sounded like it just did a second ago. Now, there are a couple of other things that can cause the flute to play a little off when you first get it out of the box. And having said that, uh, one thing I'd like to mention is that due to climate change or temperature change from where I'm at and to where you're at, the flute leather might get a little loose. And in the case of this particular customer, um, this is what happened with his. Basically, it got a little loose. And if you notice, there's a sound hole under here. And I've said it in so many other videos, but this may be your first video watching with us. Um, that that sound hole is the most important part of this instrument other than the flute player. As a matter of fact, it might be more important than me because anybody can play this flute. Uh, but uh, this is what it starts doing whenever that block slides down. It can do a lot of things. Now, that having been said, my flutes come in, I guess, three physical different pieces of what the flute is and what entails it. There is a block, there is a body of the flute itself, and something to tie it down, which is usually leather unless we get a request for vegan options, in which case we tie it with something else. So that having been said, uh, the, uh, the block here actually provides the airflow across the sound hole. The leather keeps the block tied tight against the flute, which when we ship them out, I've had people say, that's really tight, you know, because it is very tight when we ship them out. Uh, and that's what makes it play properly. When um, 
we do that, we also slide this block all the way against a little stop unless you have a drone flute, which don't have stops. Um, some flute makers make their flute with another piece of something underneath of it. So whereas we might have these three fixtures of the flute idea, <laughs> as I remember someone saying, uh, the, uh, the brass piece or metal piece or wood piece that some people put underneath of their block is where their track is, where our track is built into the flute. I figured, you know, because you seen the first time it's still played. It may not be as perfect as it would be if this was slid all the way back. But it still played. If you have a brass piece that put another, um, like, uh, I guess, questionable, vulnerable, uh, I don't know what else to say, kind of a possibility something could happen, another, you know, a variable in the equation, that brass piece could slide sideways and the block can slide in other ways or the brass piece can come out. So check that if you have a flute from another flute maker that uses said brad, brass piece or if you look underneath of your block and there's not a track built into the flute or if there's not one built into the block, which you usually can see from the front, then you may have a missing brass piece. We don't do that. Now, like I said, I try to make things as convenient for you as possible and here we are. And uh, one of the other possible causes, and this is probably the most common that I have personally experienced by observing uh, groups of people learning the flute for the first time, is people are very... They don't put enough air into it. There's not a lot of air, but... There's not a lot of air, so... That's one possible, and then the other possible problem is that on the other end of the spectrum, there's people who... I'm sorry you had to hear that. I have heard it more times than you can imagine. Uh, we've gone to so many events and places where, gosh, I'd love to blame it on the kids, but I'm actually all for kids' rights and freedom, so <laughs> I see adults pick a flute up and go... I mean, it just really... And then here's the other thing. That's not playing the flute. We have instructional videos on playing the flute. If you didn't get a sheet with your flute telling you how to play it, then please check out some of our instructional videos. Very simple, all holes uncovered is usually the easiest note to play. Cover this first hole up. Nothing to it. That's what my videos start out with. We have Native American flute playing videos in under 10 minutes. And if you check those out, it'll show you that exact same thing. But I've said it so many times, all hole open, on just about any flute is the easiest note to play because all you have to do is put your mouth to the flute and blow. And if you start, I'm partially covering the holes. I don't know if you can see it, but my fingers aren't exactly covering the holes properly. They need to seat on the holes. So when you play the flute and then cover this hole, if it makes a preferable and good sound, <laughs> then let's travel on to the next hole. And then next. See what I did? I moved that finger. I tried to do it as obvious as I could, but not so much that my finger's off the hole. If one of your fingers moves off of a hole, then it's gonna play a funky note. Sometimes those funky notes are something you're looking for. And truth be known, there may be somebody out there who's made a living playing accidental notes. But uh, you can play different scales using those notes. You can skip along and come up with all kinds of combinations, but if you partially cover a hole and cover these other holes, it's gonna sound funky. And you may be going for funky. Funky might be what's selling right now. But uh, if you wanna play the notes that the flute was designed to play properly, you need to make sure that you cover them properly. So uh, use an adequate amount of air and make sure there's no packing peanuts in the bottom of your flute, no debris under the track up here. And gosh, if you can't remember all that, do what I would do and rewind this video. <laughs> so, uh, there are, of course, a few other things that can cause a problem. If you've played the flute for a little while and it's starting to sound soggy or like maybe it's uh, gurgling or something of that nature, 
or if it's starting after a while playing notes in a higher octave or something by itself like you were blown too hard that could be moisture that's built up under the block i've been told by countless countless people across the world that my flutes tend not to wet out as quickly as other people's flutes and there's some reasons for that which we talk about in a few other videos but basically one thing i can tell you if you have a flute by another flute maker that has a nice little pointy end on it here don't put that pointy end in your mouth put it against your lips that's why my flutes don't have a pointy end uh, so another thing we do is we burn a lot of this area here which dispels moisture uh, anyway, oh, one last thing too, if you open one of my flutes up and you, it smells like a campfire, and the more you smell it, the more you have to smell it. You just feel like, oh gosh, it smells like a campfire. You either love it or you hate it. You know, it's, it's like that with life. It's a flip of a coin, you know, it's a roll of the dice, except for it's a two-sided dice. You either love it or you hate it. And uh, if you smell that, it's because we burn the holes so that they don't cause a problem down the road. Um, wood that is cauterized does not tend to leak moisture and wood that is not cauterized tends to whether it be in a year or two years or three years six years or whatever tends to cause a crack here or there or anywhere and the same thing with the mouth mouthpiece the mouthpiece is one that gets moist air put in it from my mouth all the time and uh, you know once it sits down for a day or two it's drying out and that moisture escapes from any bare piece of wood that it can. That's why we always recommend to oil your flute, which is a way that people did it naturally uh, for the last couple thousand years. Um, and I don't believe in putting harsh lacquers. Lacquers eventually crack and cause the same problem as it would have if it didn't have anything on it. But we oil and wax with a natural wax that we make ourselves <laughs> out of beeswax, unless you ask for a vegan option, in which case we use something that's not beeswax. Um, but uh, we use a, a natural oil and wax to help seal it. That seal is not going to stay on there for all of your life. However, putting some oil on it once in a while, olive oil, mineral oil, baby oil is mineral oil, uh, any natural oil that won't tend to go rancid, which are the ones that I just mentioned, unless you want to drift out into the abyss and say, well, what about this wood type of oil? A lot of woodworkers never took in consideration that you're going to be putting this thing in your mouth, so that's why I stick with things that are tried and true and definitely safe enough for you to use. We've been using olive oil for a long time and uh, for lamps too. I didn't realize people use olive oil for lamps so much, but I've read a lot here lately about that kind of thing. So uh, we've covered a lot of topics. I've got a lot of other videos. I hope this video finds you well, and of course, if you have a question, don't hesitate to let me know, as most people tend not to. Uh, hesitate to let me know but uh, also feel free to rely on some of our other videos that's what they're there for to help you answer these questions and you can always go to my youtube channel and search said videos and find solutions for everyday questions that you might have about the native american flute whether it be one of what we made or one of the ones that someone else has made it's all good we're here for you you guys take care once again this is charlie montotoyella signing out for blue bear flutes bluebearflutes.com don't forget to check our instagram under the same name have a wonderful day happy flute playing happy flute making and I'll see you later.